So I'm here today uh, with you to talk about drug addiction. For more than 20 years now, I am interested in understanding the psychobiological mechanisms underlying uh, this psychopathology. My first and main concern, however, was to question a critical aspect of experimental psychopathology, namely the validity of the experimental preparations that are used to model uh, complex psychopathologies such as drug addiction. And this ended up uh, with a publication in Science in 2004 describing an innovative model of cocaine addiction in rodents, a model based on uh, the DSM-4 criteria for the pathology. This model takes into account a key feature of drug addiction, uh, individual vulnerability. Indeed, not all drug users develop a drug addiction. Um, our model allows identifying both individuals keeping control on drug use and individuals shifting to drug addiction despite equal history of drug use. Using this model, uh, we have been able to identify neurobiological correlates of the addictive states, but also neurobiological correlates of transition to addiction. Two publications report on these results, uh, one in Science in 2010 and one this month in Molecular Psychiatry. Uh, the data we obtained challenge the uh, classical neuroadaptive view of addiction. According to this classical view, um, the drug produces specific alterations, specific adaptations responsible for drug addiction in vulnerable subjects. Uh, on the contrary, our data suggest that in a first step, uh, the drug produces the same alterations, the same adaptations, sorry, in all drug users. In a second step, the individuals who would not be able to counteract these adaptations would shift to addiction, while the individuals who would be able to counteract these adaptations would keep control on drug use. In other words, keeping control on drug use would be a more active neurobiological process than initially believed. Uh, what, did we, what did we observe precisely? Um, Fernando Casanets, uh, my colleague and electrophysiologist, investigated mechanisms of synaptic plasticity in two key brain structures, the prelimbic cortex and the nucleus accumbens core. And now Fernando will tell you what he precisely did and obtained. 